Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm David Knight. It's Thursday, January 15th, 2015, and here are our top stories. Tonight, data mining feds want all your driving information. Then, a top rabbi calls for European Jews to be armed. And just how effective are vaccines? That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. That nurse started shooting her mouth off me in that elevator? You go tell somebody else to kill themselves, not me. And they start getting smart mouth, I go, you heard it's a skeeky, dumbass? Are people starting to see the European Union as an emperor with no clothes? As a naked sham? Look at the economic news today. As the AP pointed out, Switzerland has ditched an increasingly expensive policy to limit the export sapping rise of the Swiss franc. Well, what's behind that? Well, of course, the Swiss franc is valued because it has 7% gold backing. That may not sound like much, and of course, they turned back a referendum this last November that would have increased that to 20%, but that 7% is still more than is backing the US dollar or the EU out of Europe. And of course, this is a reaction to an anticipation of what they thought the EU was going to do very soon, and that is do quantitative easing, just like the American government has done. They said that this came amid mounting speculation that the European Central Bank will next week back a big stimulus program that will put more euros in circulation, which will further dilute their value. So the Swiss decided that they are not going to continue to support the EU devaluing their currency. That's going to make things very difficult for the Swiss economy in terms of exports. But people are going to flock to money that has value. And of course, Europeans are not valuing the European Union itself. Most of the major countries in the EU are looking at organizations that are trying to pull back from the EU. And prospective members are giving it another look and saying, no thanks. As the EU is becoming a pariah, the New American reports, Iceland is dropping its membership bid. They announced last week that they plan to back out of membership talks and critics of the EU reacted with glee, they say, to the news while proponents of smashing national sovereignty and crushing self-government were left fuming. The UK Independence Party, UKIP's chief, Nigel Farage, who has made a career out of opposing the EU, had some interesting quotes. He said, the move by Icelandic authorities and the increasing Mediterranean opposition to the EU shows that the idea of the inevitability of EU integration has been smashed. More and more, people throughout Europe either no longer wish to join the EU or, as in Greece, they want to leave the euro currency altogether. And that's what we're seeing throughout Europe, not just in the UK. We also saw this in France and other countries, as you mentioned, in Greece as well. People are upset about the mismanagement of the currency, but they also don't want other people running their lives. They're having the same kind of reactions that we should be having here in America, and to some degree we are having here in America, although we're not seeing that kind of electoral success in people who want to pull back from the central government. But it goes beyond that. People are starting to question the very idea that the government can keep them safe. Here's the leading rabbi from Europe saying that they need to have the authority for Jews to carry guns. He's not saying everybody, and he's not even saying all Jews. Look at what he has to say. A prominent Jewish organization in Europe is petitioning, not demanding, but petitioning, the European Union to allow members of the Jewish community to carry guns, quote, for the essential protection of their communities. He said that the EU should empower and train Jews to handle firearms as means of protection. Once Jews got firearms in the Warsaw Ghetto, they were able to tie down five Panzer battalions for a couple of months. They finally had to burn them out. And they did it on the same day that later we saw the government burn out the Branch Davidians on April the 19th. There's a lesson there that people who are armed with small arms can even hold down a tyrannical military. We need to understand the importance of individual firearms. And of course, there is an organization, Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership. It is a private individual right to keep and bear arms. Of course, as we just saw, stringent gun control laws are no restraint against the kind of violence we've seen in France. Now, we're going to be talking at the end of the program to Gerald Salenti at Trends Research. We're going to talk about these trends in Europe, these economic trends, but we're also going to talk about the trend of whether or not people are going to think for themselves or whether they're going to blindly follow orders from authority, as we just saw in the D.C. subway. It's not only will we blindly follow orders when we're in that kind of a situation, but in an ordinary life, are we going to allow authorities to intimidate us 
to doing things that are going to harm us and harm our families? Will we blindly follow them when they tell us to get our vaccines, for example? The CDC is now admitting that up to 88% of the people who get the flu vaccine still get the flu. This is a story from Yahoo. They say that flu vaccine has just been 23% effective. See, that's the way they couch it. They don't talk about uh, how many people are getting it. That's 77% overall of people who get the shot and still get the flu. But when you break it down by age groups, we see that 26% of those aged six months, yeah, six months that young, through 17 years, 26% of those still get the flu after they get the shot. For ages 18 through 49, it was 12% effective, they say. And for those 50 years and older, it was 14% effective. Those are figures from the CDC. Now, when they say it was 12% effective, that means that 88% of the people still got the flu when they got the vaccine shot. Or did they get the flu because they got the vaccine shot? We don't know because they're not doing a study of how many people who didn't get the flu vaccine didn't get the flu. So they're not doing a full A-B comparison, and they're trying to put it out there as an effective rate, even though those rates are sinking down to nearly single digits. Now, we also see from the GOP, they're starting to try to make a move to regain the confidence of their base. I think it's really simply a head fake. We see an article from The New American that the House is voting to defund DACA and other Obama actions. And of course, that is the Deferred Action for Child Arrivals. Now, how is that going to stop any of these actions that Homeland Security and the Customs Department, Immigrations, how is that going to stop it when you defund DACA? How do you defund not doing something? See, that is a non-deportation program. So defunding it is not really going to accomplish anything, even if they pass it. But they point out in the article that the House has previously defunded DACA, and it didn't make any difference. They say the defunding did not prevent the Obama administration from continuing DACA. It instead expanded in Homeland Security Jay Johnson's executive action memorandum on November the 20th. So back in July of last year, they defunded it. Then on November 20th, we have an executive order, not from the president, but from a bureaucrat. Do you understand how our government is devolving into a dictatorship that doesn't follow the Constitution, doesn't follow the law, doesn't care what Congress does? They're going to do whatever they want to, and that's exactly what they're doing here. They called that the exercising prosecutorial discretion with respect to individuals who came to the United States as children with respect to certain individuals who are parents of U.S. citizens or permanent residents. That's the way the bureaucracy gets around the laws. For the longest time, we've had bureaucracies like the EPA, and now we see Homeland Security, essentially writing their own laws without our elected representatives, calling it regulations. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. That's the danger that we're in. Now, of course, the GOP is also trying to move and say, we're going to allow uh, people to have more control of education at the state level, and we're going to get rid of Common Core, because nobody likes Common Core. It's not just the GOP base. It's also many Democrats. It's not just parents. It's also teachers who don't like Common Core. Now, this is a new bill that is coming from Senator Alexander that they say could mark the beginning of the end of Common Core. That's the way the Washington Post puts it, because the Washington Post article is full of hand-wringing about how Common Core is so important, talking to the people who support it, talking to the people who benefit from it, who make millions of dollars selling it, this is something, of course, that Bill Gates' foundation is intimately involved in. But there's another article that I think gives a better perspective. And this one comes from the Daily Caller. This article says, will it be a catch-22? Could reforming no child left behind actually save Common Core? And that's really what Senator Alexander is proposing. He's proposing taking back no child left behind. That was something that was given to us by a Republican, George W. Bush in 2001. That was the stick and Common Core was the carrot. Common Core was going to be the way that people would be able to comply with No Child Left Behind without federal sanctions. But it's become a monster of its own. Nevertheless, in this article, they point out by removing the No Child Left Behind, giving more power to the states when the states really should be taking that power away from the federal government, not asking for it, they point out that by taking that away, it might actually strengthen Common Core. 
This is a quote from Michael Petrilli, president of the center-right Fordham Institute, and he said, it would be great for Common Core if a Republican Congress rolls back federal oversight. They say that while it began as a collaborative effort between state governments with no federal involvement, adopting Common Core was one way that states could improve their chances of receiving a federal waiver from various No Child Left Behind requirements. Understand that when they tell you what the test is going to be, teachers are going to be forced to teach to the test. So if you define the test, you're going to define the curriculum. But Common Core is being used far beyond that as an instrument of social engineering as the entire education system run by the government is a tool of social engineering. They point out these various incentives, though, that the states have signed on to by getting Common Core these various incentives have now backfired as conservative opponents of Common Core have used them as evidence that in the end, the standards are just a federal imposition on the power of states to set their own academic standards. Standards should be set by parents, ultimately, by government at the most local level if you're going to use government to educate your children. The parents should be driving that. It needs to be done at the local level. We need to have multiple approaches so that we can see something that works. What we're seeing now does not work. Common Core is an absurd method. It is designed to dumb down our children. Well, there's something else that's designed to dumb down our children that we're going to talk about when we come back from the break, and that is the new self-driving cars, or as I like to point out, they're computer-driven, government-controlled. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Every year we make resolutions to lose weight and get in shape. And the truth is it's hard, even with diet and exercise, because of toxic food in our environment that is stressing our bodies more than ever before. Working with experts in nutrition and biochemistry, I found that super high quality nutraceuticals, in addition to my diet and exercise, were the answers that synergistically worked. I can see the drastic changes every day with the amount of weight I've lost, my increased stamina, and more of a twinkle in my eye. That's why we are now so excited to launch the InfoWars Life Resolution Pack, combining three essential formulations, oxygen-based cleanser oxy powder, the secret 12 bioavailable vitamin B12, and your choice of super female or super male vitality. Now all available at a discounted price to you and your family to bring in the new year and make 2015 a true success. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. 2015 is the year to do it, and it all starts at InfoWarsLife.com. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water. I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the ProPure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. It has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The ProPure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your ProPure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. Well, computer-controlled, government-driven cars are being sold to the public as a benevolent new technology, something that is going to make your life so much more comfortable and easy. But the question is, are they going to turn out to be Autobots or are they going to be Decepticons? 
We just had the Detroit Auto Show this last week, and of course, the previous uh, week was the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. So the global auto industry is undergoing three simultaneous technological transformations. A propulsion revolution, in other words, what kind of power plant are they going to have? Is it going to be uh, petroleum-based, uh, or is it going to be fuel cells, or is it going to be electric? They also said there's going to be a connectivity revolution and an autonomy revolution. Now, of course, connectivity is you being connected to the internet because everywhere we go, we have to have our social media. We have to have our government minders following us everywhere we're going, monitoring our behavior. And of course, the autonomy revolution, the self-driving cars, as they like to call them. They say, ultimately, autonomous cars might obliviate individual ownership as cars ferry passengers to their desired designations before heading off to pick up their next customer. Driverless cars could become a linchpin of a future sharing economy. Isn't that special? See, what you're going to have is the end of individual ownership of cars. Uber has talked about it. This correspondent who has gone to uh, the auto shows for over 30 years understands that the autonomous car is going to be the end, not only of you being able to freely move about when and where you want to go, it's also going to be the end of private ownership. As you can see from this picture of the Mercedes self-driving car that was introduced last week at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, it essentially turns the car into a living room, a passive living room. In this article from robohub.org, they are gushing about the technology in the interior. They say the vehicle interior is even more mesmerizing than the exterior. They say the front windscreen has a heads-up display and each of the side windows is actually a digital screen that each of the four passengers can gesture control as they wish, even overlaying different scenery that's actually being driven through. Hey, you know what? We used to call that windows. We had a technology, and I don't mean Microsoft windows, I mean glass windows where we could look out and see where we were going. They want to keep you in a virtual bubble even as you move around in your government-controlled cars. And it's not just the government that's going to be controlling you, of course. It's going to be the corporations. Uber says that they or somebody like them is essentially going to own all the cars. It's going to be a perfect fascist economy as far as transportation goes. You even have sites like Breitbart putting up g -whiz articles. It's not even just popular mechanics. People like Breitbart don't see the problem with this. They sell it as a feature. They say virtual traffic lights on your dashboard could make driving safer and faster. They say virtual traffic lights that will be on your dashboard will revolutionize traffic patterns and make our drives faster and safer. With this technology, the traffic lights will be created on demand when two cars are trying to cross this intersection, and they'll be turned down as soon as we don't need it. This new technology would make use of the new vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle safety communication systems with which the federal government is mandating that cars be equipped. Yeah, they're mandating that you're going to pay several hundred dollars more in today's dollars in 2020 so that your cars can talk to each other and talk to the government. Kit Daniels nailed this in an article today on Infowars.com. He said, advertisers and feds want data automakers collect from their high-tech cars. So it's a bidding war. Again, it's corporations and it's government. Corporations are going to make the money. Governments are going to control you. And they're going to cooperate in a fascist economy. He says, every BMW rolling off the assembly line collects data on location, speed, acceleration, even the weight of the passengers in the car. The data is so comprehensive, it could tell advertisers when a car carrying a child is passing by McDonald's. It could also tell the government when you are speeding. He says ever-expanding governments are always looking for ways to make more money, and especially things like gas tax, taxing you by the mile, or giving you a speeding ticket by constantly monitoring you. That's how they're going to stop anyone who wants to drive their cars on the road. They will bludgeon you to death with taxes and with insurance fees because you are going to be the dangerous one on the road. You're going to be a danger to everybody who's got their wonderful little Autobots that are moving them around in a government-controlled cocoon. And then there's this chilling quote from Ford's global vice president. He said, we know everyone who breaks the law. We know when you're doing it. We have a GPS in your car, so we know what you're doing. And guess what? They're going to share that information with the government. That's what CISPA is about. 
It's not just going to be the phone companies, the internet companies that are spying on you and sharing that information with the government. It's also going to be the car companies, or actually, since you won't own the car, it will be the taxis spying on you once they get you out of your private car. Well, stay with us right after the break. We're going to have a report from John Bowne on Obama's U.S. terror cells. Stay with us. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. I took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. So, Mr. President, how do you uh, how do you handle uh, how do you handle promises that you made when you were running for election, and how do you handle uh, how do you handle it? I mean, what do you say to people? Do you uh, do you just uh, you know? I know people uh, people were wondering. You don't you don't have it. Okay. How sad was it in the streets of Paris as 40 world leaders walked? down the street. Absent was the United States of America. Where was the president? Attorney General Eric Holder was in Paris for a terrorism summit with French President Hollande, but darted out just before world leaders historically convened to pay their respects to the fallen Charlie Hebdo cartoonist. Holder then went on a media blitz claiming that there is no credible threat to Americans. The entire threat environment is as dangerous as anything you've seen since 9-11. Is that still the case? Yeah, I would say that that's true, although there's not a specific credible threat that I can point to. It makes the average American wonder what the Obama administration is hiding when anyone can go online and discover the clear and present danger of decades old State Department documents revealing what has been lurking within at least 22 of our United States. Videotape uncovered by our investigation team. Sheikh Jalani is seen here both recruiting American Muslims and instructing them in Islamic guerrilla warfare tactics. The tape is known as Soldiers of Allah. On behalf of the Muslims of America, I present before you a documentary film in helping and training oppressed Muslims. I'm proud to say that to sit with, them, with my colleagues who have been successful in founding an international organization which is called Soldiers of Allah, S-O-A. And we are establishing training camps. You can reach us. The Clarion Project, who I work for, we broke this story uh, about how a terrorist enclave has been detected in Texas. We know this from declassified FBI documents. There was originally some broad intelligence about it, and so we started investigating. We figured out the group's front organizations that they were using in Texas, and then some activists from a group called Act for America went and verified the specific location so that we made sure that we, we definitely knew what we were talking about. And then we got declassified FBI documents and confirmed it 
separate from that end. Uh, so we know for a fact that this organization that runs the 22 villages, as they call them, also have one in Texas. In 2001, ATF Special Agent Thomas P. Gallagher testified in court that individuals from the organization Muslims of the Americas are trained in Hancock, New York. And if they pass the training in Hancock, New York, are then sent to Pakistan for training in paramilitary and survivalist training by Mr. Jelani. On January 23rd, 2002, American journalist Daniel Pearl was kidnapped on his way to question Sheikh Mumbark Ali Jelani's connection to shoe bomber Richard Reed in downtown Karachi. Nine days later, Pearl was decapitated. On May 16th, his severed head and decomposed body were found cut into 10 pieces. Jelani was temporarily in Pakistani custody after the kidnapping. The main compound near the town of Hancock in upstate New York, known as Holy Islamburg, was founded in 1980 by Jelani as a religious sanctuary for devout Muslims. This land is located near the reservoir that supplies most of New York City's drinking water. In fact, most of the compounds are near strategic locations within the United States designed to affect a mass population event at any time. According to the 2006 law enforcement report, Jelani opened his compounds near significant infrastructure targets. Islamville is less than five miles away from the Catawba nuclear facility. The FBI's own documents define the Muslims of America as an autonomous organization which possesses an infrastructure capable of planning and mounting terrorist campaigns overseas and here within the U.S. How can the Obama administration claim they are concerned about lone wolf attacks, i.e. gun owners, tea partiers, and constitutionalists, when training videos clearly link Shiaik Mubarak Ali Jelani to an expanding network of radical Islamic cells within the United States? Further State Department documents have not listed Fukra as a terror organization, regardless of countless felonies committed by its members. Jelani's intent is echoed by the Muslim Brotherhood with slogans like, God is our objective, the Prophet is our leader, the Quran is our law, Jihad is our way, dying in the way of God is our highest hope, and Obama's ties to the Muslim Brotherhood are becoming increasingly well known. Why? Why President Barack Hussein not hitting hard on the terrorists and on ISIS? And I know it sounds crazy, but bear with me. President Barack was born after his older brother, Malik. The father, Mr. Hussein, named his son Malik, and that's one of God's names in Islam. The second son, he named him Barak. What does Barak mean? Barak is the right Prophet Muhammad, and we can see Mr. Malik sitting with Mr. Obama, visiting him in the White House. Mr. Malik is in charge of the Muslim Brotherhood in Africa. There's a lot of finances going on through Mr. Malik, and we can see him in another picture holding the Yemenian dagger on his waist, and he is a big supporter to the Muslim Brotherhood. And that explains that Mr. Barak is saying, is not hitting hard on the Muslim Brotherhood. On the contrary, he took them off the terrorist list. For years and years, the Muslim Brotherhood is on the terrorist list around the world. In the Arab world, who knows them best? But Mr. Barak decided to take them off the terrorist list and start to be sponsoring them and put them in charge of Egypt. The IRS and your tax dollars allow these nonprofit organizations openly hell-bent on the destruction of the United States to operate within the United States. Demographics show that the Muslim birth rate is the world's highest, but it is falling faster than the birth rate of any culture. The Muslim world currently has 25 million idle young men struggling to follow the immigration path to Western Europe and the United States to escape abject poverty and diminishing resources. Now the Obama administration is playing semantics with the usage of the term radical Islam in an apparent bid to paint their investment in a better light. The lengths to which he will go to avoid telling us the truth about the enemy is becoming or comical, it's certainly embarrassing. Uh, for example, he will never forget about that we use the word 
jihadist. He'll never use that. But he refuses to use the word Islamist, which is used throughout the Muslim world. It's used by journalists, by authors. There are a variety of reasons why but, people... But was radical Islam one of them? There are a variety of reasons why people do these things. Some of them are potentially religious okay, based. But all I'm asking Some, is if you think among those variety of reasons, radical Islam might have been one of the reasons uh, that the individuals took the steps that they did. We see, say, radical Islam. I mean, I think those people who it's, espouse a, a version of Islam that is not. Are you, are you uncomfortable attributing any of their actions to radical Islam? It sounds like. No, it. I don't want to say anything negative about a religion that is. No, no, not I'm, I'm not talking a, about a religion. Like I'm talking about radical Islam. I'm not talking about the general religion. Mr. Ag, it's hard to yeah, get an answer, yes or no, but. And look, the Middle East is coming apart with this administration's policy. Look at Libya. We should never have gone into Libya. Gaddafi was on our side. Look at Egypt. Morsi is now going after the Muslim Brotherhood and the radical Islamists. And we've got Muslim Brotherhood in the U.S. government today. And and so look Wait, at who, what's who, going who, on in Who Syria. from the Muslim uh, Brotherhood is in the U.S. government right now? Who? Yes. Uh, oh, look, uh, I haven't got their names exactly, but there's a, a list of them, at least 10 or 15 of them. Do you know any major Arab ally that embraces ISIL? I know major Arab allies who fund them. He spent about an hour meeting with five different rebel commanders who came from all over Syria to plead with him for heavier weapons, a no-fly zone, and airstrikes against the forces of President Bashar al-Assad. Arming the enemy and advancing its movement towards the United States' wide open borders. If ever a U.S. president committed treason and deserved impeachment, the time is now. Regardless of our long-standing stance on religious freedom, these terror cells are being protected for what blatantly appears to be a key component of the new New World Order's endgame on American soil. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin b12 bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin b12 secret 12 secret 12 is an excellent christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your new year's resolutions supplies of secret 12 are very limited secure yours today at infowarslife.com or by calling toll free 888-253-3139 Well, as we said at the beginning of the program, will you be controlled by fear and blind obedience to authority, or will you act out of self-preservation? Will you think for yourself? And of course, we had the famous experiment from the 60s, the Milgram experiment, where people on the orders of someone in authority shocked someone to the point that they were severely injured or perhaps died. And we saw this reenacted on French television about five years ago, with 80 out of 96 people in front of a television audience what they thought they were doing was shocking someone to death. We've also seen it in real life. We saw people run back into the Twin Towers when they could have escaped or sitting in their chair because someone told them to go back in. Someone told them not to leave. And most recently, we saw it in the DC subway. Well, joining us to talk about this is Gerald Salenti of trendsresearch.com. Now, he contacted Rob Dew after he saw Rob's report about this fire on the DC Metro People told to just sit in place as the subway trains were filling with smoke. Amazingly, they did, many of them. One woman died, 84 went to the hospital. And of course, we've seen this before, 9-11, people who could have gotten out of the second tower and they were told to stay in place. Many of them obediently did. Some of them got out and were told to go back and they went back. Now, Gerald had an experience with this in Chile. Welcome, Gerald. Uh, tell us about your experience in Chile. Well, it was back in 2010. And I was on the uh, 14th floor of the Crown Plaza Hotel, along with one of the, my colleagues. And 3.30 in the morning, things started shaking. And it was the worst earthquake they had over there in 100 years. 
So immediately, you know, I was out of there. You know, I just grabbed my, my, my pants and <laughs> heading down the <laughs> stairs. And then the thing went off in 90 seconds. But to make a very long story short, when we got down there, this is a hotel probably holds about 200 people, 250 people. There were only about several people down. We had to exit another way after we got to the third floor. Everything was collapsed underneath it. And most people stayed in their rooms. Mm -hmm. And the place didn't come down because it was one of these earthquake-resistant buildings, so the thing was all twisted. But, you know, it didn't collapse. And as people started coming in, you know, four in the morning, five in the morning, and I kept asking him, you know, what, what did you do? Well, these were the stories. I called the front desk. <laughs> uh, we were wait we called our tour operator. <laughs> we went into the bathtub. I think that was a different movie. You're supposed to go in the bathtub. <laughs> and we stayed under the under the door. Oh there yeah. You, <laughs> you know, a, a, a 20 story <laughs> building comes smashing down. You stand under that door, you're gonna be okay. What it, the, the moral of the story was that everybody froze. Yeah, yeah. And, I saw a quote from you. You said, think for yourself. Nobody can think for themselves anymore. They, they, tr they, they trust authority, but they can't even think for themselves. They were afraid. Yeah. And because what's happened is that's all they sell us is fear. And, but don't worry about it. We're going to watch you and we're going to take care of you. We'll be in charge. Oh, you have nothing to worry about. So that's the mentality that people have in their minds. They've lost the courage to think for themselves, to be themselves. They lack the dignity and self-respect. And so they put their lives in the hands of others. And you see it all the time. It's going on right in front of us now. You're seeing what's going on over there in Europe. People are buying the baloney saluting the leaders and following the script. Yeah, a lot of this is just a, a blind reliance on authority. And of course, that's the way much of this stuff is being sold to us. Look at climate change. That's essentially an appeal to authority. When you ask people, why do you believe uh, that we've got global warming going on? They'll basically cite some authorities who told them that it was happening. They can't look for themselves. They won't look at the data themselves. They won't step outside their room and look at the weather. And of course, if they bother to look at these models that they're using to project uh, global warming, they'll see that for the little bit that we can look at, of course, these are such long-term models, you can't verify most of it. But the little bit that we can verify, we see their models are broken. They're not working. Yet people will still buy that reliance on authority. We saw it with the Milgram experiments back in the 1960s. When the authorities told them to uh, shock people, even to the point of death, they would do it unquestioningly. Yeah, so when Rob did that piece and how the people obediently behaved, it's even worse now. Think yeah. of how kids are growing up going to school. You know, they, they, they're going to little prisons. Oh, they absolutely. got cops in school. You can't make this stuff up. Mm -hmm. Look, if I grew up now, if I was a little kid now, they'd have had me whacked out on Ritalin a long time ago. <laughs> I'm serious. That's right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, so what I'm saying is the whole culture now is so fearful. Every day is another day of fear. Think I'm making it up? Watch out. There's a guy up there in Ohio that was going to attack Washington, D.C. And I tell you, he was going to destroy the whole place single-handedly. Good thing we got them. We're on the case. Yeah. Look, yeah. you watch what happens with the Super Bowl coming up. Mm -hmm. All we're going to hear about is the no-fly zones, all of these guys out there. With it. Here comes a, you know, they got all this armament. Oh, yeah, here comes a terrorist. Da -da -da -da. Oh, it's a 12-year-old kid. What I'm saying is you're seeing it in France now. Yeah. You're seeing it all over the world. They got tens of thousands of stormtroopers out there. All they're doing is putting fear into the people so they obey. Absolutely. They can't sell anything without using fear. And of course, they're pushing the new agenda to try to control the internet. CISPA is coming back yet again. And of course, it's the fear that somebody is going to hack into your computer when the government's doing it all the time. 24-7, <laughs> 365, the government is hacking your computer, your phone, everything, and yet we're supposed to turn over all of our freedom to them because somebody might look at our emails.
Yeah. Somebody is looking at our emails, aren't they, Gerald? Well, of course. Well, you know, now, by the way, that, you know, Obama came out and he made that, um, that North Korean hacking, that American business Sony. I thought they were Japanese, but they say they're an American <laughs> business. And, and they made a big deal out of that one. And, of course, in the, you know, the wired world, everybody said that, you know, it was an inside job and mm -hmm. North Korea didn't do it. But they made it a freedom of speech issue. Mm -hmm. What's going on over there in, in uh, Europe, they're making it a freedom of speech issue. So now we are all, and people say to me, uh, Mr. Salenti, aren't you concerned about the government? You know, you say something. I said, no, I don't have to worry anymore. Obama said that it's a free speech issue. So now it's okay for me to say that the president of the United States is a fraud and a disgrace to this country, and so too is Congress. I don't have anything to worry about anymore. I could say it. So yeah, I just want to make that clear. So if anything happens to me, I doubt it, because the president said he's in favor of free speech. So my speech is he's a disgrace, and so is Congress, that these are the people that are leading this country down. And what's going on around the world, by the way, put it all together. It has nothing to do with a couple of crazy guys killing 17 people or, or, or 20 people in France. It has nothing to do with the one guy in Ohio that was going to take over Washington. What they're doing now is they're setting us up for the takedown because the global markets are coming down. They're out of control. I'm seeing swings that I've never seen in my life before. The Dow is up 300, down 200. The oil is up 4%, down 5%. Day after day. Mm -hmm. You see what's going on over there with, with the Swiss franc now. You know, they're no longer pegged to the euro because they know that Draghi over there is going to pull his QE stunt that everybody knows isn't going to work, that's devaluing the euro. What they're doing is it's in place, the economies are collapsing, and now they have the people in height of fear. So when this thing goes down and people start taking to the streets, they don't have a chance. Look what's going on in Spain. The Podemos party, out of nowhere, they could win the election today. You look what's going on in Italy between the Five Star Movement and the uh, Northern uh, League. You look what's going on in every country in Europe, whether it's Germany, all of these UKIP in, in, in the UK. One party after another, they've had it. And now the people are ready to go to the streets as this economy is going to collapse. The euro is on its way out. It's getting slaughtered, and now they have the stormtroopers in place to keep you in your place. Absolutely. When you look at what happened with, you mentioned uh, gold and volatility, that went up, uh, or the Swiss franc went up 30% in 13 minutes. And of course, gold has been shooting up today as a, con as a uh, commodity as well. But 30% in just 13 minutes, and you're talking about how they saw the quantitative easing for the euro coming and they no longer can hold the line and hold the value down of the Swiss franc. They just can't afford to do it. That's a 30% jump in just 13 minutes. Yeah, the Swiss know what's going to happen. You know, when they, when they start this, this, this quantitative easing, quantitative easing, buying government bonds and corporate crap. That's all it is. And it's not going to work. Financial Times did a poll about two weeks ago on this. It, the, the vast majority of the economists said it's not going to work. All it's going to do is devalue the currency. That's why you're seeing gold go up. And again, the only reason the dollar has any strength is because of all these world currencies are so cheap. Look at the price of copper. It's not only oil. Copper is at five and a half year lows. There's no demand. There's excess supply. I'm not making this number up. 85 people. 85 people have more dough than half the world's population, 3.5 billion. You look what's going on in Brazil. 
with Petrobras, their energy company, not only caught in corruption, bam, down on a downhill slide. Look what's coming on here in the States. Look at the bank profits. Hey, guess what? 20% or thereabouts of the junk bonds in this country, energy related. Yeah, one after another, they, they're in the mergers and acquisitions of the energy. They're in the deals, they're in the drilling, they're in housing. The banks have been, this is another Ponzi scheme ready to collapse. That's what you're seeing going on in the markets. It's out of control. They may be stupid, but they are very shrewd. The ones in charge, they know this thing is coming down. And what you're seeing going on about in Europe, about you know these Islamic you know, guys that are going to take over the world, all this is is a setup to keep us in check. Because when they, people start hitting the streets, they're going to blow them out. We're almost out of time, Gerald, but I wanted to get your take. Uh, you were talking about how they're using free speech to sell this. But, of course, when they had their unity march, they excluded the political party that had just won the European elections a few months ago. That was Le Pen's party. And uh, that seems to be what they're afraid of. It looks like the people in Europe across the board, whether it's UKIP in England or whether it's Le Pen in uh, France, they understand that they don't want to be a part of the EU anymore. And, of course, Iceland just dropped their membership application. The new government there said they are no longer going to continue talks uh, to join the EU. So they don't want to get in. The people who are in it want to get out. Uh, what do you see happening in Europe in the short term? Oh, it's going to be chaos. There's no way of bailing them out anymore. They've stolen the people's money under the name of austerity measures which is white shoe boy language for, for give, taxing you more as you're earning next to nothing. It means taking away your benefits and your any kind of social services and then raising your retirement age till after you die. So they don't have any more games to play. You're looking at the unraveling. I'm making this very clear, is that what they're doing with this whole thing about, you know, the Islamic fundamentalists taking over the country is really a drill mm -hmm. to really put the people in their place because the soldiers are out on the streets and the police are armed to the teeth. They are not going to tolerate any dissent. Look at this guy, Halan. What was his popularity rating? 15%? I can now say that the French are as dumb as the Americans. They had their imbecile in chief that's selling them the war on terror, and we had our imbecile in chief over here, Bush, selling us on our war on terror. And anybody that wants to get into a good business, I suggest you consider propaganda. You could do it cheaply, stupidly, and get great results. Uh, they're stepping it up, aren't they? It's going to be interesting to see what happens in Europe. It's going to be interesting to see if the people can wake up and take control of their government or if it's already too late. Uh, thank you for joining us, Gerald. Uh, it's trendsresearch.com, and uh, you can get a subscription there to Trends Journal. You've got your 2015 forecast up there now. Yes, we do. We have also our conference is available, too. It's a five-and-a-half-hour conference with all the trends of the year to come. Great. Now is the time to uh, take a look at that because there are some amazing trends, as you pointed out. Commodities are crashing, and I think really the thing that's driving this whole collapse in oil prices that people aren't talking about is just how weak the global economy is. So it looks like a, a, a serious year this year, not only deflation, but perhaps even depression. Thank you so much for joining us, uh, Gerald Salenti. Well, that's it for tonight's news. If you're watching this on YouTube, please become a YouTube subscriber if you're not already. And if you're not a subscriber to Prison Planet TV, that's one way that you can support our operation and share it as it happens each night at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. You can share that with up to 20 of your friends. Right now, you can still get an annual membership for just $29.95. Join us again tomorrow at 7 Central, 8 p.m. Eastern. City of Austin tap water versus filtered City of Austin tap water.
I can like taste dirt in it. God knows what's in this. This has an aftertaste. Tastes like Austin water? Yeah, it does. Ugh. These people just sampled City of Austin tap water straight from the faucet. Next, we had them try a sample of tap water filtered through the Pro Pure G2.0 filtration system. High quality H2O. That one is better. Tastes like nothing. Yep, I know what good water tastes like. It's good water. Most tap water contains added substances like fluoride, chlorine, Monsanto's deadly pesticide, glyphosate, and many others. Studies prove that these substances are linked to an assortment of major health issues, including tooth decay, lowered IQ, and even cancer. It tastes like you're drinking out of the lake when you're drinking tap water. Yeah, it has uh, that uh, processed flavor to it. The Pro Pure G2.0 filtration system removes these deadly substances and many more, leaving only fresh tasting, deliciously clean water. Okay, this is very tasty. It's good water. Refreshing. It's good. <laughs> Go to InfoWarsStore.com today. Use promo code WATER and save 10% off your Pro Pure purchase. Again, that's InfoWarsStore.com or call 1-888-253-3139. You are watching the InfoWars Nightly News, which airs 7 p.m. Central at InfoWarsNews.com. And your support is helping us defend liberty worldwide. We'll have a lot of stuff going on in the background. Just let us know if you like it or, you know, some stuff. And we can put some stuff on the yeah, side. Yeah, just be clear. I'll be back in the old studio tomorrow. Yeah. But we're going to start now, maybe one day next week, then two days the next week. Right. And we're just going to phase it in the next month. Okay. And then Buckley, we've got the satellite uplinks. We got to yep. run work with that Houston group and everybody yep. else. Perfect. So here's, the, here's all the flu stuff. I just put over here behind the thing. You're going to go to that. Absolutely. You are a genius. You're good to go. And you don't, hey Travis. Go yourselves in a control room. You guys don't kill each other. Well, my friends, it's already the 15th day of January. We're already halfway into the first month of 2015. I'm your host, Alex Jones, and I've been procrastinating, uh, busy with documentary filmmaking, the, the nightly news, the radio show, family issues, you name it, in the last year that our new studio has been pretty much finished uh, and that we've been hosting the nightly news out of for about six months to start segueing out of the old little studio that's going to be a voiceover room in the future and a backup uh, studio into the new studio. But we are in the new TV studio. If you're a radio listener, you go to infowars.com forward slash show or presentplanet.tv members also have the uh, higher def feed and we'll get the commercial free podcast later today. You'll be able to see it all there at presentplanet.tv as well. And of course, we're not really presenting this in television, so you get to look uh, at uh, yours truly. You, I need to actually pay you to do that. I understand that. I think I've got a face for radio sometimes. Uh, but the reason we are television is we can show you video clips. We can show you the news articles. We can show you the documents. We can have our guests in studio. Uh, and you can get a chance to basically add several layers uh, of uh, informational awareness to that. Well, this should be interesting today. I would expect that uh, you might see a few interruptions here and there because we are doing three hours of live radio slash television with a full eight camera shoot and a full crew today out of the new tv studios uh, we're just gonna mess with backgrounds if you see something you don't like just let us know during the break and we'll make sure it's not in the next time we make them you know okay. um, but we have a bunch of a bunch of stuff we put up and then um miss attribution Dr. Edward R. Groove. What's your middle name? Frank. <laughs> Dr. Edward R. Frank. I love it. So, Jones, when you unplug, 
That's <clears throat> that's yours. This is if we want to hook group With up to, to the original writing of the. And we're going to fix this eventually, but this is if we if we're going to take calls or group, we'll have that plugged in for you. Well, this will be a day long remembered. We've seen the end of Kenobi. We'll end soon the beginning, see the end of the Republic. <laughs> And the beginning of freedom. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's been waiting on me procrastinating to move in here, but 